So now let's talk about the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are the tiny glands that sit on top of your kidneys in your lower back. And they produce the stress hormone known as cortisol. Now the stress response is actually mediated by your brain. The hypothalamus in your brain signals your pituitary gland, also in your brain, uh, which then signals your adrenal glands to make the cortisol. So this is called the HPA axis, which stands for hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Now the problem is that chronic stress can affect the way the brain and the adrenals produce hormones. So when the balance is off due to chronic stress, it can lead to significant fatigue, often called adrenal fatigue. So this is the hormone pathway that takes place in your adrenal glands. So as you can see, all these hormones are made from cholesterol. So even though we typically think of cholesterol as bad, you actually do need some cholesterol in your body to make your hormones. So if you're stressed out, you make a lot of cortisol. And DHEA is the good adrenal hormone that counteracts the negative effects of cortisol in the body. Now excess stress can affect the female hormones as well. So in women, there's something called the pregnenolone steel phenomenon. So pregnenolone is one of the main precursor hormones at the beginning of this pathway. So when a woman is under a lot of chronic stress, it can cause the hormone pathway to be diverted towards making more cortisol, which can then cause progesterone levels to drop. Now remember, progesterone is the calming hormone. So that's also why when women under, are under a lot of chronic stress, they will experience anxiety, insomnia, and irregular menstrual cycles, sometimes even an absence of periods for several months. So the chronic fatigue, which results from long-standing stress, is often called adrenal fatigue. So it's basically where, when there's an imbalance between cortisol and DHEA levels in your body. So as you can see here, cortisol is the bad adrenal stress hormone. It causes weight gain. It'll make your blood pressure go high. It causes insomnia, fatigue. It weakens your immune system, and it accelerates aging. Versus DHEA, which is the good adrenal hormone. It's considered the anti-aging hormone. It helps with memory and mental sharpness. It improves your immune system. It counteracts the cortisol, and it's also very important for the thyroid hormone working at the receptor level. So I find that treating adrenal fatigue can make a big difference in patients' symptoms and quality of life. So we can get an idea regarding the health of your adrenal glands by checking your DHEA level on blood work, and the exact test is DHEA sulfate. Unfortunately, cortisol is not very accurate on blood tests because it fluctuates every hour of the day. So the best way to evaluate your cortisol levels is through a saliva test. And basically, you'll collect your saliva first thing when you wake up in the morning, then 30 minutes later so that we can see your cortisol awakening response, and then four other times throughout the day. And you submit your specimens frozen to the lab. And the lab generates a very nice graph showing us exactly what's happening with your cortisol throughout the day. So then depending on the stage of the adrenal fatigue, we can create a treatment plan that involves lifestyle changes, diet, and sometimes supplements and adaptogenic herbs. So adaptogenic herbs are herbs like ashwagandha and rhodiola that support the adrenal gland and the stress response in the body. We often also replace the good adrenal hormone, DHEA. And the great thing is within three to six months on these protocols, patients feel significantly better. So the thyroid, the adrenals, and the sex hormones, they're all interconnected. So in my practice, I do specialize in making sure all of these are balanced.